In this VizCast, we're asked to find the average translational kinetic energy and the thermal speed of oxygen gas molecules. Now these oxygen gas molecules are at either 80 Kelvin or at 300 Kelvin. So there's four quantities that we want to find. And we're given some extra information that one mole of oxygen molecules has a mass of 32 grams. To start with, we remember that the average translational kinetic energy of my gas molecules, which we can write like this, is actually given by just the temperature of my gas with some proportionality constant, which is 3 halves times Kb. This means that as long as I define the temperature of my gas, irrespective of what the pressure is or the volume is, if I know the temperature, I always know the average translational kinetic energy. To find the thermal speed, we recall that we can write the kinetic energy as a half times the mass of the molecule times the velocity squared. This is the average translational kinetic energy, so it's really the average of the square of the velocity. And that too must be equal to 3 halves kbt. If I rearrange this equation here to make the velocity the subject, then what I end up with is the halves cancel. I divide by my mass, so I get 3 kbt divided by m is equal to the average of the velocity squared. And then I take the square root of both sides. And what I found here is actually the square root of the average or the mean um, of the square, the RMS value. That's a really useful value to describe the average thermal speed because in a gas, when we think about the velocity, we have lots of particles moving around in different directions. If we use a coordinate system where we say up is positive, then some of those gas atoms are moving up, they have positive velocities. Some of those gas atoms are moving down, they actually have negative velocities. And so on average, if I took the average of all these positive and negative values, they might average to zero. But that really doesn't describe what's going on inside the gas. So if I first of all take those values, those velocities, and I square them, which is what's going on here first, then all those negative values become positive values. And not only do those negative values become positive values, but it's a square, so actually those all of the values end up being up here. What I can then do is take the average of that group of, of values, that's the average of the squares of the velocity. When I take the square root of the average of the square values, I end up with a positive value which is representative of those distribution of velocities. That's the root mean squared. And this RMS is often used when looking at an average value of quantities which are both positive and negative. An example of this would be the RMS voltage of AC volts. So we have our expression for the kinetic energy and we have our expression for the thermal speed. So it's a matter of putting some numbers into those. So Let's do our first case at the temperature of 80 Kelvin. So the average translational kinetic energy is just 3 halves times Boltzmann's constant. That's what the Kb is, 1.38 by 10 to the minus 23, multiplied by 80. So we put that in our calculator. We end up with 1.656 by 10 to the minus 21 joules. So it's a very small amount of energy, but remember, this is the energy that one molecule has. We want to work out that thermal speed, which is the same as the RMS velocity. Then we can do the square root of 3 kbt on m. That's actually going to be the same as 2 times that 1.656 by 10 to the minus 21, because this is 3 halves. So if I multiply by 2, I get 3 times kbt. And then dividing that by the mass of my oxygen molecule. Now I don't know what that mass is just yet, uh, but we can work that out. We, we are given that a mole of oxygen molecules 
And so that means a mole is an Avogadro's number of oxygen molecules. It's going to have a mass of 32 grams. So to find the mass of an oxygen molecule, I just have to take that 32 grams and divide by Avogadro's number. So remember that 6.02 by 10 to the 23. We can look that up in a formula sheet. That will give us the mass, and that's 5.31 by 10 to the minus 26 now kilograms. So, so if you don't get this number on your calculator, just remember that 32 grams has to be converted into kilograms, so we need to divide that number by a thousand to make it kilograms. And also it's a good idea when you're dividing by Avogadro's number or any number when it's in scientific form here, put brackets around it when you're putting it in your calculator. So if you put this in your calculator and get the mass to be a very large number, then probably what you're doing is dividing by six but multiplying by 10 to the 23. The mass of oxygen should be very small. It's one molecule. It's not surprising that it's 10 to the minus 26 per kilogram. So that's a number that we have down here for the mass, 5.31 by 10 to the minus 26. Putting all of that into my calculator, I end up with the square root of 62,307, and that is 249 meters per second. So the average thermal speed of my oxygen molecules is 250 meters per second. I can also go through, work out my sample of molecules at 300 Kelvin. There, my average translational kinetic energy is going to be now increased because I've increased my temperature and that average translational kinetic energy is just proportional to temperature. In fact, um, how much is it increased by? It's increased by the ratio of 300 over 80, which is 3.75. So my new average translational kinetic energy at that higher temperature is 3.75 multiplied by 1.656 by 10 to the minus 21 joules. And numerically, we get a number which is 6.21 by 10 to the minus 21 joules. That new thermal speed should be larger because I've increased my temperature. However, the thermal speed goes as the square root of the temperature. So that means that my new thermal speed will be the square root of 3.75 multiplied by 249. So that's equal to 482 meters per second. You can go through and check these numbers independently by going back to the original equations, or you can just realize that my translational kinetic energy is just proportional to temperature, and my velocity is proportional to the square root of temperature. To assess this, I want to introduce a figure. So what I've got plotted here is the Boltzmann distribution function, which tells us the probability of finding an atom at a particular velocity in a gas with a particular temperature. So the red curve here is for a gas at a temperature of 80 Kelvin. So the thermal speed for 80 Kelvin we found was 249 meters per second. It's around here. It's close to the peak of that distribution, which is the most probable velocity. But it's not quite there. The characteristic of the, the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution is that it peaks close to the thermal speed and it has a long high energy tail. So the probability of finding atoms with a high velocity is small, but it's still finite. If we increase the temperature of our gas, what happens is the probability distribution broadens, it widens, and it also moves to higher speeds. So the most probable speed increases. The thermal speed increased to about 482, which is here, and we have more atoms in the higher energy tail at higher velocities.